Let's go back to events on the weekend and more in the national security space. Joining me is Shadow Home Affairs Minister James Patterson. Senator, welcome. Um, I, I'm not going to labour the ins and outs of the attack too much. I think people have, have uh, had plenty of commentary in the last 48 hours. But, but, but what struck me on the weekend, and uh, you'll know I was involved in the Lint siege terror attack when I worked for the Prime Minister, but what concerned me most was, was how easy it was for a very unsophisticated lone killer to cause such a carnage, it, it, you know, it's a knife, easy to procure, easy to conceal. If this had been a more coordinated attack, and we've seen plenty of that overseas, uh, even if it was just with a knife, let alone a firearm or an explosive device, are we as prepared as we should be? Peter, you'll understand why I'll be cautious drawing any direct policy lessons out of what happened on Saturday in Sydney. But speaking more broadly, it's absolutely the advice of our intelligence and security agencies like ASIO that the greatest terrorism threat that we face in this country is a lone wolf actor, often using a low sophistication attack like a blunt object, a knife, a car or something like that to cause very serious harm. And unfortunately, on the weekend, we saw how one person with a weapon can cost the life of at least six innocent people and many more still in hospital. And there mm. will be many Australians asking themselves tonight, how do we stop that from happening again? And we need to study very closely the investigation by New South Wales Police when it's complete and the coronial inquiry that's taken place to learn the lessons of um, were there any signs of this person's uh, behaviour or risk to the community? And if so, how were they missed and why weren't they acted on? And is there anything we can do to further harden public places where there are significant gatherings of innocent people and civilians to make sure that someone who mm. attempts anything like this in the future for any reason can be disrupted more quickly than they were to prevent more harm being done? Yeah, you don't know a coronial inquest could take at least 12 months. Is, is there any support for, for a quick review, let's say, and there was one done by the Commonwealth after the Lint siege attack? Uh, do we need a, national, a security review by the NSC? Uh, you know, should the ASIO chief now be brought back into the National Security Committee? He was put out the door by the Prime Minister. Should he be there as a regular attendee? I mean, are these some of the things, given his warning about the uh, risk of an Islamist attack over the next 12 months, is this the time now to say, look, we got that wrong, let's, let's beef up our, uh, our uh, preparedness across the board? Well, Peter, well before Saturday, the ASIO Director-General and the ACES Director-General should be back on NSC because they have insights of value to offer that the government can't always anticipate and it's absurd that they've been excluded on a regular basis from that committee. But I think you're right to point to the policy lessons that were learned from the Lint Cafe siege. Change did follow from that to make sure that police, uh, and mm. if necessary, um, at the ADF can be deployed to respond to terrorism incidents like that, particularly in major cities, at quick notice so that uh, you know, we can limit harm to the community if things like this happen in the future. And I do support uh, quickly acting on this if there are evident lessons that come out of the New South Wales Police Inquiry, which will be much more quick than the coronial inquiry, as you rightly pointed out, that could take some time. But as the police conclude their investigation on a much quicker time frame, there may well be very clear lessons that come out of that. And if so, we should move quickly and the federal government shouldn't hesitate to act on that. Can I ask you, you've been in those Senate hearings today in relation to the proposed new detainee laws. Um, there's been some concern from Home Affairs that people smugglers could take advantage of the changes. That's a pretty concerning revelation. What, what do they mean by that? Well, Peter, this is the hearing that the government never wanted to take place because they want to rush this bill through the parliament without any proper parliamentary scrutiny. And after today, I can see why. Because of the 101 people who've submitted and organisations who've submitted to the inquiry, only one was in support of the bill, and that was the Department of Home Affairs. Everyone else was thoroughly critical of the bill. And even the Department of Home Affairs themselves, in their own submission, conceded that elements of the bill could be used by people smugglers to encourage people to get back on boats again as an unintended consequence of the legislation, which is, of course, the concern that the Coalition has been raising uh, for many weeks about this, and which we were pre previously accused by the government of politicising this issue. But in black and white, in their own uh, writing, their own words, Home Affairs has admitted that risk now. And so I think it is legitimate that we have this scrutiny. I think it is legitimate that amendments are considered to this legislation because it is not clear on the face of it that the government has got it right. But unfortunately, we have been only limited to a single day of hearings, despite all of these submissions that have been made. And many people, including multicultural communities and diaspora communities, legal experts, 
won't get the opportunity to testify before the committee, won't get the opportunity to ask question, answer questions, and that's clearly because that's politically inconvenient for the government. Well, that's not a good way to approach sensitive and important legislation like this. Uh, what's the timing on the on the legislation? We're we still looking to have it back in the budget period. And when will we see the report, James? So the committee is required to report by the 7th of May, and that's a timeline that we set to make sure that when the parliament returns the following week, if need be, the parliament can deal with this legislation. We've got no indication from the government whether they're open to amendments or what time frame they're seeking to move this legislation on. But there is the potentially relevant High Court case, ASF 17, being heard this week, and we'll mm. hopefully have more information based mm. on that uh, in the coming days. All right, I'll leave it there. I'm out of time. James Patterson, thank you very much.